yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know who it is. This is Kevin from the Code Progression Podcast, brought to you by MSOTG Rocks or Rock and Metal Thrive. Happy Thursday, everybody. It is November 5th, and this is probably one of my favorite top five best interviews to date where you guys requested this band to be on the podcast for me to check them out i got them on their new album distance is coming out on november 20th i am super excited for it and we go so in deep with this episode we talk about the music industry and what's happened with COVID 19 and everything around that we go so deep in the creation of the distance album from this band it is absolutely incredible you will know everything about this album going into the release of it so you're going to be completely prepared you're going to really get to know and understand what the writing process was like what it was like to create these songs and everything around that and then we'll talk about some fun stuff too including bands like i prevail and of course Ice Nine Kills. So please welcome Dan and Eli from the band Boys of Fall. I know you guys are ready, so enough with it. Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, I've had a good number of you guys request me to check out this band and get them on the podcast and well when you guys talk i listen so without further induction they've got a brand new album and i can't believe i already forgot they have it called distance coming out i believe it's on november 20th am i correct on that that's right yeah yes i'm correct on that so please welcome dan and eli from the band boys of fall so guys welcome to core progression podcast thanks so much hello, for that. hello. It's good to have you guys here. And again, like I said, you guys were like a highly requested one for me to do. So I'm like, you know what? Listen to the music first. Let's see what happens. After I got through the three songs on distance so far, I'm just like, yep, this is happening. So I've tried to just send out some emails, send out how I can connect with you guys. And then all of a sudden, a week and a half later, bing, bang, boom, here we are. Thank you so much. That means a lot, man. Uh, it's it's a really good, uh, especially at this point, and if you want to call it our career, that uh, we can make new fans and established, you know, people like yourself. It means a lot that uh, people were reaching out to you about us, and uh, uh, means a lot that that you, you checked out the new music and it and you think it's good. <laughs> you know, you know when you get to our our stage in the game, uh, it's that's a good thing. Uh, you know, to still have people. Uh, be interested in what you're doing and and that's really cool so we appreciate it oh very much so and one thing that i saw too like with the people that are requesting you guys for, to be on the podcast were people that are following my stuff that have never reached out to me at this point yet like it was all brand new people that i haven't heard from that have been following this stuff for a while but i've not like consistently i always have a good amount of people like within like the instagram dms on facebook messenger that are always yeah. contacting me like very consistently i'm always responding to them but then i kept getting this new crowd people like check out boys fall check out boys of fall i'm like okay, if you guys are constantly requesting this, I, I can't ignore this after a while. And it, cause it was like after three days I had 10 people. I'm like, okay, this is, this is definitely really cool. something. That's really cool. It, you know, it's funny. Cause we were just, uh, so we, we got together to shoot this like uh, documentary thing that we're working on. Uh, it was the last weekend, Dan. Yeah. And um, we found this like YouTube reaction video from this guy in Ireland. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was it was like the best thing uh, I've ever seen in my life. And and he he said the same thing on his video. He's like, I've been getting all these comments uh, from people that checked this band out. So here we go. And his reaction video was just incredible. And so yeah, it's it's really really cool uh, to hear that. I should have made a reaction video too when I heard this stuff for for my YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, let's just put this on because there'd been a point where I'm just like. Huh, this is interesting to see how it goes. And all of a sudden, like once the unclean vocals would come, I'm just, I'm just this is basically my reaction. I'm like, huh? Oh, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> how, guys? How? Yeah. Yeah. His, his reaction was very similar to that. So that's really cool. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of how we wrote the song. We did that on purpose. And I mean, specifically distance. Uh, I don't know if you're referring to anything else. But yeah, uh, that one in particular was supposed to punch you in the gut. So I, I think that it's worked so far. So that one definitely did. And then but by the time this up, uh, but basically by the time the album comes out, because I always do like I'll do like different album reviews on the YouTube page as well. And when your guys has come out, like there's going to be a video for an album review for you guys as well. And I've done this with other bands as well that I've uh, interviewed. Basically the closest one I've done since is, or before you guys has been Saul. So like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. always, yeah. I'm always, I'm always stoked to do stuff like this. I'm like, especially if I can talk to you guys on the podcast and I'll talk about the album and all of a sudden, bing, bang, boom, listen to it and then get in deeper with it than I 
had beforehand, review it, put my thoughts out there on YouTube, and all of a sudden push out the uh, review because all of a sudden people are just like, oh my God, is it good or not? And all of a sudden after most of the time when people watch around, there's like, okay, we definitely have to listen to this album when it comes out. Or if it's already out, it's like, okay, why haven't we listened to this yet? Well, that's really cool, man. We will definitely appreciate that. And speaking of Saul, I think our buddy, our buddy uh, Miles. Is Miles, that. yeah. Yeah. Well, what about Miles? Uh, our, our buddy Miles is in that band, Saul. Oh, I'm trying to think because I've, because I got to interview their lead singer, Blake, and then there's his brother, Zach, and I'm trying to think of, you know, just give me one second, because I got to pull up their, my little sheet that I have of theirs, because I had like a whole preview sheet when I interviewed them with everybody that was on there, everybody in the band, so I just got to pull up, because if it's the guy, uh, who, what does he do in the band? That's a real question. That Drums. Drums, yeah. Okay, because on their song, Brother, like, the like if there's one thing on that album, it's like, if there's one complete standout moment over everything else, it's the drumming on Brother, just how different dynamic it is throughout the whole entire thing. It is incredible. Yeah, dude, Miles, Miles is solid. the man. I, we love that guy. And he's, he's in, he himself is an incredible musician. He, so yeah. his old band worked with our singer, um, uh, cause our, our, our singer own, used to own a recording studio. In fact, all the, all of distance is self-recorded and self-produced, uh, mm -hmm. by, by our singer, Mike. And so he used to run a recording studio in miles old band, uh, renegades. Um, they, uh, they're from Kansas city. And they recorded, they recorded a whole bunch of, I, I think they recorded an album or, or they, they did an EP or, or something with them. Uh, so they were up in Michigan quite a lot and they're the homies, man. We, we played uh, in uh, Kansas city and, and they showed up and brought a shitload of people. And uh, uh, you know, Miles has always kept in touch. Um, and so I'm rooting for that dude. I know that he, that, that Saul is doing big things and um I'm really happy for him because he's a phenomenal musician by himself. Like he, he not only plays drums, like he plays guitar and bass and he's just, uh, and he's great at all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just really, really wants to do it, man. Like he really wants to play music. It's, it's it, for, for guys like, you know, me and Dan who've been doing it a long time. It, I, I think, I think it's pretty easy sometimes to get a little, uh, a little jaded, a little tired of stuff, you know, it's kind of like same old stuff and it's really cool to see somebody like miles who is uh he's got fire in his eyes like he yeah. just he just wants to do it man and it kind of like reminds you of like why you even got into it to begin with you're like oh mm -hmm. i remember when i was you know that on fire for it so it, it inspires you you know so yeah, yeah and especially him. after listening to that album as well because i've got but, but well by the time we're recording this it's before the album comes out but because after when I got to interview him, they sent me the album early. I got to listen to it. I've got my rev my review for the album ready to come out two days before the album comes out. And I put it this way: for like a debut album, does it reach that like debut album uh, echelon of like uh, "Appetite for Destruction" by Guns oh, yeah. N' Roses or "Hybrid Theory" by Linkin Park? I'm like, over time we'll see where it lands. But after the initial reaction, I think the lowest it can go, like in terms of like good debut albums is like right under those so i'm talking like if here's hybrid theory and appetite for destruction this is where rise equals by saul comes in. it's like just right under there it is that good awesome that's a big deal man that's dope i'm really yeah. glad to hear that <laughs> i'm i'm stoked for it dude I, I i've never met any of the other guys but i know that uh, i know they're a legit project and so that's that's really that makes me really happy for for miles especially so i mean a, a, any musician that can come out and 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 do big things at all i'm rooting for them because this, mm -hmm. this is a tough game to get into so i'm definitely uh de definitely rooting for those guys it is a tough game to get into however it just they've got the sound to work with it they've got some other they've got the team they got the fans behind them to really push their stuff as well because they're all over serious xm octane right now because yeah there's yeah. uh on facebook there's this guy that ends up running both the serious xm octane fan group and then the saul fan page on facebook it's the same guy and wow. just like when it comes to just like anything that has Saul on it, like the fans are just pushing it like crazy. So any, once King of Misery came out as like their, their full single on Octane, it was just people requesting it left and right, left and right. <clears throat> and it was incredible to see it rise up the charts. And it's this, this guy, it's I've seen him on a bunch of other bands I've interviewed and worked with as well and seen the exact same results. That's so dope, man. Great. That's really cool. That's a big deal. It, it really is. And it's cool to see kind of like, you know, those bands that are really emerging in the scene really start to get more of that notoriety and it's all because of honestly just the fans really pushing it at the same time as well oh dude yeah i mean that's that's kind of that's kind of our story too you know like when when you, you talked about um uh you know like how how, how you got in, in, introduced to us in general we actually uh, a few years ago we actually went on a complete hiatus 
and uh we released an album and it did really well on spotify and we had no because at that time it was like 2016 2016 is when we broke up and i remember um i remember our singer mike he texted me and he's just like hey do you use spotify and i was like no and this was like this was like <laughs> 2017 ish and you know i i hadn't been i hadn't been paying attention to anything that we had released or anything i i was trying to move on with my life uh it was because it was a tough breakup uh the band was at least so um and and he's like have you ever heard of spotify i was like well i've heard of it but i don't use it and he's like dude you gotta check the bank account like we're streaming like crazy and i was like what and i i look on there we had like (laughs) I think at the time we had like 35 or 30,000 monthly listeners on, on Spotify. And we're like, well, we didn't really know what that meant or, or anything in it. Then all of a sudden we got started, our, our current manager, they reached out to us. Uh, we're just like, Hey, are you guys, are you guys looking for management? Like, are you guys, you know, trying to, trying to get signed to a label kind of a deal? We're like, uh, and it just all kind of happened out of nowhere. And it was really just because people, it just kind of, I don't want to say it took off online, but we had a cult following, you know, like we had fans that were just really passionate about our, our music and, and just kept listening to it and listening to it. And, and, and the right people started noticing. It was like, people really started taking us seriously, uh, because of Spotify. So, um, you know aggregating fans like like real like good loyal fans is so important and that's kind of like the beauty of the internet and spotify um or you know the internet in general kind of how music is consumed nowadays is like it, anybody can access it and at, at any moment it could it could do something you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's it's you know we're we're really uh, we're really fortunate in that regard Oh, very much. I've seen it with a lot of bands happen that way too, where, especially this year with everything going on with COVID. Cause it's like, yeah, you can't really go out and do much, especially at the beginning of it. So a lot of people were kind of lo- always looking online for new content, just constantly looking. And when it came to music, it was people were just begging for new stuff as well. Cause it was just, you know, it's new, it's fresh. It's something that they can sink themselves into that they yeah. haven't done before. So you're not watching Tiger King for the sixth time again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, so bands that were coming out with new albums during that time and new music d- during that time, were really hitting it, really hitting it hard bands like Polaris. Cause they just come out with a new album right before everything happened. And that album just yeah. completely took off. Um, I'm trying to think a couple other ones, August Burns Red, the band Red, Trivium from, a- from Ashes to New is probably the, be- probably the best example of just like completely taking yeah. this pandemic time and just running with it. They're, they're yeah. the prime example of it. And then you guys also as well, taking that time where it's like, okay, yes, it's 2020. Yes. You know, I know you guys can't go out and really tour right now. However, putting out new music as well, especially getting, getting closer towards the end of the year where this virus, we still haven't necessarily, we still haven't beat it yet. And we, you know, we're still going to be going to this winter month period where people are going to be inside. They're going to be looking for new stuff to do, new stuff to really listen to. And all of a sudden, boom, your new album distance is going to end up coming out right as that starts happening. Yeah, man. You know, it, 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 it was kind of weird timing. I mean, we were, we're, uh, we were already due for an album cycle and, Mm -hmm. um, really really actually you know I, I hate to i hate to say it like this but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because it allowed us to shut everything down that we were working on and solely focus on the record again because it was completely self-produced um you know time time is your is your best friend i mean as long as you're using it wisely you know with with your creative process like we were really able to sit down and 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 look at things under a microscope and and in fact, like right up till July, when we turned in the album to the label, um, you know, like that last week, we were still making tweaks and changes. Yeah. So I mean, that, that last week we scrapped like, or I mean, that last month we scrapped like two whole songs and put yeah. a whole new other two in. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, you're exactly right. Um, so, you know, I like I said, I, I know that 2020 has been really, really rough on a lot of people out there. So, uh, you know, but for us, uh, as far as the creative process went, you um, you know, it, it actually helped us out. Um, and we'll focus on touring and, and all the other things that, that come with being a, in a band later, um, you know, when that time comes. But at least at this point in our career, it was it was amazing for everything else to just slow down and we could focus solely on the <clears throat> art. And yeah. ultimately, I think that that's why this is doing as well as it is, is, you know, the circumstances of the listener is that, like you said, looking for new things to listen to, they're stuck inside, 
but uh, on the other end of it, I, I like to think that we put our best foot forward too, you know, uh, because of the time that we took. And as far as the quality of the music videos and the quality of the merchandise we're putting together and the, the aesthetic of the record and um, making sure that it lined up with the sound. And just like Dan said, making sure that, you know, are we really sure about these songs we just wrote? Uh, no, we're not. Like, let's scrap them. Let's, you know, it was, so we wrote we wrote a couple more and and threw them on, and they fit they fit the album better. So, um, really proud of that, and 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 thankful in a weird way uh, for how 2020 has been for our band, at least. It really played into our hands well, like like just where we were at it. Like we finished like doing the whole better moment cycle and that, and we we had some tours. Like we, we had some tour plans in 2020, but it was still, it was so far down the line that like, we didn't really have to shift our plans much. Like we, we knew we'd be writing when all this lockdown stuff came into play. And then when we just kind of saw the way it was going, we were like, all right, well, this just gets pushed and we have more time. It, it wasn't like one of those bands that was like, had all their merch packed up and everything ready to go next week. And then all the venues shut down. Like we, we were really like already doing kind of what we had to do. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense because I know some bands like um because probably the biggest one that I remember was like that it was like a five finger death punch because it was them I prevail, Papa Roach and Ice Nine Kills and they were like about they're about to go on the road like two weeks after the shutdown happened so all of a sudden like all this stuff was like they got all this stuff they pushed it back to um like towards the end of this year and all of a sudden it was like yeah everything was supposed to start happening around like like early October. And then all of a sudden, of course, we're we're past that point, and they, that whole entire tour got canceled. So all the stuff that they had for, plus they just dropped a new album at the end of February, Five Finger Death Punch. That is, so there's and so there's just so much going on at that point where it's just, oh yeah, you have all this stuff that's probably all ready to go, and then all of a sudden, boom, it sucks. It's so, it's so scary too, like, like especially bands at that scale. Like a lot of them will take out like big loans to pay for that much merch that they plan to sell on the tour, and then all of a sudden you can't sell it, and then you know the payday comes and those bands are in trouble like that's that's scary yeah man it's i think i think hopefully um you know because like because the way that record uh deals are or have been structured i I don't know what those massive ones are like but i really hope that this you know the pandemic and everything kind of changes the way that artists are compensated because um you know, it's just kind of like anything you do in life. Like if you don't diversify your income, then if that one source of income, uh, you know, gets stifled or stopped, then, then, then you're, (laughs) then you're broke, you know? And then it's like, then what do you do? And, and I just, you know, there's a, you, you hear the horror stories out there of like really big bands, never making any royalties at all. Like that all goes to the label. Um, and I'm not here to dog record labels because, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't, we're, we're thankful to have been signed and we learned a lot of lessons from it and they've done a lot of uh, wonderful things for us. But the reality is, is like, man, you know, artists got to eat too. And like, if, you know, if, if there's, a, and, and when this is all over with, like, it's not like, oh, we're just all going to get back out on the road. A lot of these venues didn't, are not going to survive. And so then, oh, then what, then what happens, you know, like, I think artists should be compensated uh, for the songs that they put out. You know, we, like we, we need to find a way to put money back in the artist's pockets. Um, clearly. I mean, clearly yeah. like this, this is not, wor- this doesn't work uh, for, for people, even the big boys, you know, like you just said, um, you know, I just, I, I, I'm hopeful that, that this will, uh, you know, start a, uh, start change within, uh, you know, with how artists are compensated. I really do. I think it's definitely going to spark some change because when you're taking a look at what's going on right now, it's artists are having to make their money in completely different ways due to the fact that it's, you're not being able to go out on tour. You have to think of all these different things that you're going to end up doing. And one band I'll use as an example, because I'm wearing their shoe right now, is Ice Nine Kills. Take a yeah. look at the stuff that they've done. It's like every single nine, like the ninth day of the month, they come out with a limited edition merch line. And I'm not going to lie, I've like, oh, since the pandemic, I've probably participated in like three or four of those because there's put, stuff they put out. Like, I think it's cool as all hell. I mean, I got a shirt with Donald Duck looking like Jack Torrance from The Shining running around with an axe through the Stanley Hotel. I think it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. I've, I've worn it out a couple of times and people have asked me, where have you gotten that shirt? Like, they yeah. want it. And I'm like, well, you can't get anymore because like, oh, out for two days yeah but like but like the where i'm looking at that is like they come out with like an app as well with like a just like a for their own like fan community 
And it's like, you know, oh, if, you, cool. if you want like all the exclusive stuff, you got to pay for it. If you don't want the exclusive stuff, you, it's free, but it's just kind of like they're making money in different ways. There's a bunch of other bands who are doing that same stuff as well. But where this is going to come in down the line is when this pandemic is over and things kind of start getting back to normal, we're always going to remember what happened here. And we're going to, and when it comes to negotiating different record deals for these bands, they're going to remember this and the big boys are going to know this. So what's going to happen is, is these deals are going to be restructured in a completely different way in order to make sure that the artists have some sort more protection in case something like this happens in case of a major downfall. So there's going to be a complete restructuring things. And I've seen some of it in sports as well right now. So oh, yeah. eventually it's going to end up reverberating throughout the music community. It's going to happen. And it just, all that depends upon is how is this going to end up looking? We know there's going to be change. It all depends upon how it's going to end up changing. And it's going to all depend upon how some of these bigger artists end up having to restructure their deals because of it. And they're going to end up being the first ones to go. We're going to see that blueprint that happens off of it. Mm -hmm. And without like, and I I really don't want to get political on this, but, but like the one one thing I will (laughs) say is like, I, as an artist, like I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. uh, And, and Dan is too, we, we have uh, stable jobs outside of the band. Um, So, you know, I'm okay. Financially, I'm good. Um, but you know, I, I, as an artist, I'm a little, I'm a little pissed off for lack of a better term. The fact, like the amount of not anything Congress did for the music industry, like at all, like yeah. with all the stimulus money, like, um, you know, it's, you know, it's a, a lot. To, I, I mean, I, I don't know the exact figure, but I know it's over a few billion dollar a year industry, the music industry in the United States alone. And it was just like, we can't, you know we can't help, help, (laughs) help these venues out or these artists out at all, you know, like, um, especially, especially with, uh, again, how these record deals have been structured for so long. Um, you know, it's like, well, all of our fans did not stop streaming on Spotify. They did. They didn't stop listening to music on Spotify. They didn't stop listening to their favorite artists. Where does that money go? You know, because you get, you know, they, they pay out per stream. It doesn't go to the artist. You know, and, and a lot of these artists are, like you said, they're trying to innovate and that's great. Like, you know, innovation is, you know, when your back is against the wall, like that's, that's what this is all about is being creative and finding new ways. But I just, I just don't think that I, I I'm just, you know, that's why I really, I'm hopeful for yeah. change because like, um, at, the, at the end of the day, like, I mean, the core of it is the music and like the yeah. innovation around it is like awesome and should happen, but like, right. Still the core. Yeah. It's like, well, Yeah. Like you wouldn't have to, I don't know. I don't want to make excuses or anything. I just, I, I, I am hopeful that this changes the way that we appreciate music in our country and the way that we appreciate art um, and live music. And uh, I, I hope, I hope that, I hope that it doesn't cause so much irreparable damage to artists and venues to where um, we can't change and appreciate. You know, I hope that it doesn't drive so many people into bankruptcy and all these venues are closed to where there is no more live music at a certain level, because that's a possibility. Like if, you know, if so many of these venues shut down and only the big boys can tour, um, there's a lot of mid-level bands that just are not going to get, you know, their, their fair shake. Um, so I, I, I hope that it doesn't get to that point, um, you know, to where it just dies. <clears throat> yeah, I do have to agree with you on that, especially like I don't want to get I don't like to get political as well on this, but I do have to agree where it's just I've seen some things where all these different places were getting different um like different aid from the government and yeah. live music like the music venues, all these different entertainment spots, they weren't getting anything and it really kind of was like stuck it stuck out to me because not only like with where I'm at talking with all these bands, these mid-level bands on your guys' level as well. But then I'll see different things in the entertainment industry, especially like bars and restaurants, because my brother's a bar manager over in Madison, Wisconsin, at the University of Wisconsin's campus, seeing how it's affected them and how they literally got no help throughout the whole entire thing. It's like, what the heck's going on? And then looking over here in Milwaukee as well, because our biggest live music venue is the Rave over here, and seeing what they've been trying to do just to make sure that they're able to continue going on. So once live music comes back, the venue's able to get back. They've done things like they've got all these different, um, through 30 years, they've got all these different signed posters from different tours, different bands that have come by, and they're auctioning them off on the internet to people to try and raise money. 
Not going to lie. I have one hanging up right now. It's a signed Rise Against <laughs> poster that I want. I was just like, yeah. Yeah, well, that's dope. <laughs> that's my favorite band of all time. I'm like, if I, I had a chance of winning, I put a bid in. I completely forgot about it. Three days later, I got an email that said, you have not paid yet, sir. I'm like, wait, I won? <laughs> within, five, within, five, within five minutes, I had my money. I'm nice. like, yeah, send it on over. But one other thing they're doing too is, because of how old the building is and it's supposedly haunted, for the next like three, four weeks, oh, sorry. They're, let, they're letting people come in and tour the building at night, lights off completely. All you have is a flashlight, and just like kind of give like that all like that whole entire spooky vibe to it as well. That's dope. So it's that's like, so sick. But where I'm going with that is like not many. We're kind of going with this is that venue is very unique in the in their ability to do stuff like that. There's a lot of venues I've started to see that are going down and just shutting <laughs> down completely because they don't have that kind of history or they don't have that ability to continue to make some sort of money during this time. Yeah, man. I mean, it's even scary too, like because a lot of people in bands like us too when they're not touring their other job is still in the industry like some of them do the bartending or things like that and so they don't have the band and then their venue that they work at normally is closed too and it's really hit some people just disgustingly hard yeah it, it really has and then when it comes when it comes out of this when we finally come out of this like we're saying, like with innovation, with learning from this and figuring out different things like people are going to end up learning okay when it comes to First, personal finance, what do we have to do in order to make sure that we're protected from something like this? Or when it comes to live music entertainment, when it comes to like the bar industry as well, how can these people that are working in that industry, how can they make sure that they have some sort of protection in case something like this happens again? Because with how this ended up happening, how it went down and how it's still continuing on and how these people are still end up like, like people are trying, like bands are trying to raise money for their road crew still because... Yeah. That's how they make their living. I've seen bands do like the whole entire, like all these shows that are like live stream shows. And it's all based upon raising money for their road crews. I've seen people put out shirts and I've bought a couple of them as well. So it's just, I've seen this consistently happening. It's just, we're at this point where we're over seven months into this thing. And it still doesn't seem like there's any end in sight, which kind of sucks because for me, I want to get back to live music. I've talked plenty of times about this, where when you go to live music, when you go to shows, there's some sort of community. There's a family feel to it where no one cares about who, like what you do outside of there. No one cares about like basically like any other preconceived notion. All that matters is, is if you're in the crowd and someone else in the crowd, doesn't matter how you connect with that band that's on stage. All that matters is you connect with them in some sort of way. And it's mm-hmm. both for the positive and you're going to enjoy it regardless. Dude, yeah, that's so well said. I mean, like, I that's one of my favorite things about like being out on the road. Well, first of all, my my favorite thing about being in a band in general, like, <clears throat> I I'm a lifelong musician. I've been playing since I was five years old, and you know, like, I've been uh, really fortunate to do all this. But like, my my favorite thing above the traveling, above the playing live music, is just the people. Like, my favorite thing is hanging out with people who. <laughs> Uh, just just people even if they don't love our band whatever they don't know who we are like I always try to make friends with people everywhere I go like uh, and and you're right dude like it's it's amazing to see the diversity of people um, and especially like being able to travel as much as we have to like you just kind of realize dude like um, <clears throat> like we're not all um, we're not all as divided as as you know you would think that we are like we there are things that can bring us together uh in a positive way um and uh, and and music is one of the most powerful things that uh that unite people um and yeah it's a beautiful thing i miss it terribly i think uh i think our culture is like in general um suffering because we can't express our art together and um like you said share moments like that together with one another it's uh it's I'm very much looking forward to where, to when we can. Mm-hmm. And same here. I'm looking forward to end up getting back in those mosh pits and potentially getting hurt or getting hurt at the same time as well. Either <laughs> or happens, but it's fun as all hell. Plus, I like I remember going to shows where it's I've seen people at these shows. I do not remember their names, but I've seen them at like six or seven sim- similar shows, and we're always in the mosh pit together. And it's like, oh hey man, how you doing? We yeah. start talking. We don't know each other's names, but we know who we we know who each other is. We know us by our face, and we know that once this once the music gets going. If one of us gets like completely destroyed in the mosh pit, you're gonna have like five, six people literally come pick you back up and then throw yeah. you right back in. That's right. awesome. <laughs> and that's the way it should be. But and I love what you said. It's like, you know, taking a look at people if people look at the way that feel like the way the country is now, it's like everyone feels like everyone's so divided. But like once we if once like go back to live music, remember what it was like. You're gonna get people from all sorts of different backgrounds, all all sorts of different political views, all sorts of different experiences. 
coming together and there's never any problems because everyone again is there because they connect with the band that's going to be on stage in some sort of way that has a positive reaction from them and just sharing that positive reaction is the similarity that can get us through anything oh absolutely man Mm -hmm. absolutely i mean you you see it like we just yeah that's it's my favorite thing about um music in general um is is just how how powerful it is with um you know, either taking you personally out of a dark place of what you're going through or um, making new friends, you know, or um, it's just music is, I think, one of the most powerful things in the world uh, in general. And, um, and definitely, uh, definitely, you know, miss the live setting for 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 those reasons. Absolutely. Oh, very much so. And with that, it's like, because we're talking about live music, we're talking about you guys missing being on stage. Why don't we talk about your music as well? Because, I mean, we again, you guys got a new album coming out sometime soon. Yeah. So let's really dive deep into that. And one of the things that I saw, especially going through your music, going through your, like, bios online, going through Spotify, is that, like, there's, like, a bass and alternative rock. And when I looked at them, like, it's alternative rock, but there's with, like, some sort of, like, metalcore in there, to be honest. And how I looked at it specifically when I tried to describe it, it kind of reminds me of dance Gavin dance in a way, but I'm like where I struggle to get into dance Gavin dance at points. It's I'm more prone to really get into boys of fall more versa. And it's just with the way you guys construct your music is just for me. It's just something that I connect with a lot more. I'm prone to really getting into. And a lot of that, that mixture of that alt rock. And then when you kind of go with that more like melodic metal core, unclean vocal style, it's just that mixture. I don't know how that, how those transitions work. I don't understand like exactly. Okay. How you guys decide to construct it that way. But when you listen to it and how everything flows together, it just works. It, it, it's simple as that. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, so like our older discography, like a lot of that stuff, like we were definitely uh, we were definitely a, a, a data remember esque type of band where like we had a post hardcore sound. And then um, then we also had a pop punk sound and it was like two different bands in one. Um and we also have a uh, really steady acoustic uh, following, you know, like we do a lot of acoustic tracks, either like a co- the cover EP that we did, we're always doing acoustic music. And I think starting there, I think that, cause I was thinking about this last night, um, our acoustic music really taught us to focus on songwriting. And I got to give Jake and Mike credit on that uh, because they, they do a lot of the, the acoustic writing and, um, and I think that like when you take a song to its bare bones like that, and it's just all about the song that really teaches you how to structure your music. And so we, you know, we learned a lot through that process um, and, and we've applied it to our, our own music. And then, you know, kind of through the years, we've experimented with certain things on the last album cycle. We experimented with, um, you know, trying to, trying to be more of a, of a pop band, take, take the pop punk flavor that we always had and kind of infuse it with um, a little more like alternative rock and, and pop. And um, to be honest, like, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not really happy with that, with that record. I'm not really happy with that outcome. Um, and, and I wasn't personally going into this, uh, into this, when we started writing distance, I remember, um, uh, we got home from tour uh, last fall, and then we were, we were shifting gears to get to get ready to start writing this album, to get ready to start writing Distance. And uh, for our first writing session, um, I texted Mike, our singer, and I, I and I said, "Hey, I'm gonna come come early. I want to talk to you." And I think the first thing we both agreed on was like, "Dude, like I'm not happy. I'm not happy with. Uh, I never wanted to write an album." or put out an album that I wasn't happy with. And I feel uh, like, I feel this, I feel like, uh, I feel regretful. Like I feel regret that we, that we did this. And um, I really want to take what we learned on that album cycle. And, and then I want to, um, I want, I want to do certain things with this album. You know, a big thing was heavier guitars, um, whatever that meant, it, you know, um, you know, if, if the song, no more putting a ceiling on things, you know, like if the song took us in a direction, then we follow that direction. And that means uh, distance is a great example. Like that song is a great example of it started off as, as a sad, slow ballad. And then it, it turned into something heavy. And then we wrapped the, the ballad back into it. And it's like that, just that writing session, those two writing sessions that we had for that song in particular, it took us in that direction. We didn't put any rules on it. We we're just like, Hey, Um, if, you know, if the part calls for a scream, like lay it down, Mike, you know, like, or if it's, if, you know, 
if it doesn't, then, then, then sing there or whatever, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's, this is kind of, kind of how it happened. It was like, we, we just want to, uh, take all of our life lessons in songwriting and, and just infuse it into this record. And then at the same time, playing to everyone's strengths, uh, everyone in the band, you know, Dan is a different guitar player than we had when we originally started. So he's got a lot of different strengths. Um, and, uh, you know, same, same with our, our drummer Bean, now that he's back in the project, uh, you know, that kind of gave it its, its uh, Boys of Fall, you know, our traditional Boys of Fall thickness, <laughs> for lack of a better term, because he's just, he's a really powerful drummer. He's, he's a big, powerful guy. And uh, that's just how he plays drums, too. It's just he smacks the shit out of his, <laughs> out of his drums. And he's very, like, on, on, uh, right on beat. Oh, he's not, he's like a machine. Um, and, uh, and Mike and Jake, the two best vocalists I've, quite frankly, I've ever been around. Um, and I've been around a lot of good ones, uh, but those two are, are world-class. Um, so, so yeah, uh, that's a long drawn out way to say that, you know, we've just, th this, this album, we collectively decided on certain objectives and I think we achieved a lot of them. And I'm really proud of that. I probably think the best thing that you said in that in the end is something I'm a huge proponent of when it comes to people I've talked when it comes to people writing music and it's when you're writing a song when you're writing songs when you're writing music it's don't try and force anything if the way you're writing a song if it dictates going a certain way like you're saying if it dictates you know bringing in more of that harder sound bringing those unclean vocals if that's something that really works out by God, do it because that yeah. flow that authenticity is gonna be there it's gonna stick it's really gonna work out well. And taking a look at distance, like you said, it's the perfect example because when you get that more like alt rock ballad style in it, you get this more feeling of like this just growing sense of like despair and angst going through the whole entire song. But then yeah. when you get to the bridge and I'm like, I'm always waiting for something like, okay, I'm waiting for something just to kind of come right at you, hit you in the face just to, cause that's kind of the way the song felt like it was going. Right when you got to the bridge, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, this happened. Because when you listen to it, like the instrumentation, it gets so much harder to transitions out of that chorus. And you're bringing the unclean vocals as well to kind of just get that quick transition into there. And we kind of also still get that like kind of same pace, that alt rock ballad slowness in the pace mixed with more of that metal core tone. I absolutely loved it because it kept that whole feeling of like that despair, angst and anger. And it just literally just put it out there in a whole different perspective as well where people might connect a little bit more with that, like more alt rock ballads out. But for someone like myself, because this is where I really got drawn into this song where I love that harder stuff. And I love just the way the instrumentation just brings out the emotion in that. And sometimes with the unclean vocals, how that just accents it overall. And in this case, mixing that harder sound, the more metalcore sound with that alt rock pace as well. I mean, this just stood out as one of the absolute highlights from the first couple of songs on this album. It was incredibly well done. So when it comes to, letting the song dictate itself. This was a very smart move on your part because of honestly how killer this outcome is. Thanks man. Thank you. I mean, I think <clears throat> I remember when we first wrote that song, I, 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 I kind of talked about it in our documentary that we filmed, but personally, um, you know, I've been in this band since uh, I'm one of the OG members. Uh, I've been in it, you know, we started uh, well, I joined in late 2011. Uh, so it's, it's been a very long time. And, uh, you know, this band has kind of become my identity in life. And, and I remember, <clears throat> I remember last year, just like I said, just being really unhappy. I felt really numb. Uh, you know, I felt just, like I said, personally, just, I took a lot, I took a lot of baggage with me. It wasn't being a good bandmate, uh, wasn't being a good friend. And, um, I wanted to just like feel something again. And, and I like, I needed our music back in my life. I needed us to write something that I felt passionate about again, so that I could just feel something. And that distance when, when that demo hit my email, cause the first, the first, like the soft part, I wasn't a part of uh, Dan and Jake and Mike wrote that. And I got that, I got it in my email. It was just bare bones, like just, just, you know, guitars uh, and MIDI drums. And uh, I just remember immediately calling Mike and being like, dude, this is awesome. Like it just inspired me. My, you know, my bandmates, uh, inspired me and I fell in love with my band again. You know, it's not that I thought about quitting or anything, but I was just like, um, feeling a lot of resentment and, and just, like I said, unhappy and numb and, uh, had no direction of what I was doing or where I was going. I didn't feel like a, a good musician anymore. I felt like maybe, maybe I was too old to be out on the road or something like, um, 
and that that song that song entered into my life and made me fall in love with my band again so when we got we all got back together I definitely uh, helped out with writing the second half of that it just inspired me it just inspired you know like I I was able to um feel like a musician again feel like a contributing band member and and bandmate and um you know really we we all poured our emotions in into the music you know and i like you said i i really think that even instrumentally i think you can hear that and you can tell um you know when you even just outside of the lyrics we're very obsessed with melody um every single uh you know even the drums have have a structure to them um, you know, and, and, and obviously we're not like Polyphia where we're, you know, <laughs> virtuosos, uh, but, you know, I, I think that I think- you, t- you touched on that, um, that our, our music has emotion to it, even just the music, because we're so obsessed with structure and melody. Um, I think that's, that's something ahead. that, that's something that I was thinking about a lot with this record too, is just like the, like what makes like a song good kind of thing. Like it really comes down to the melody, wherever that may be. And I think like, when you think of like just the good songs throughout time, those those are ones that like they sound good the way the band played them. They sound good when another band covers them. They sound good when just some guys at a campfire with his guitar. They sound good if someone's just playing an instrumental version of it on piano. Like it's all about like what's that core like thing that you can whistle and like that's something that I think we are thinking a lot about when we yeah. write. Yeah, like when, when we were laying down like Dan, Dan's leads, like we will sit there and nitpick and I feel bad for Dan sometimes because <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, but but we get, you know, we get like that's where Dan's a trooper because we get like he's a phenomenal player and then we want to take his skill and we want to line it up with a melody and just make it, you know, make it really special. And I think if you were to pull the uh, pull the vocals out of this album in general and just listen to the in- instruments, each part you could he- you could sing along with the guitar, you know, and and that's that is the point is like and you could even sing along with the bass because my my bass parts are structured that way. Um, and li- like Dan said, you know, like you could. Um, you know, you can, you could whistle it. You could whistle your, your, your leads that you put like there, there are times where like, uh, you know, you write a lead and, and it's just like, what I remember is like the melody that, that is catchy to me is the guitar melody, you know? So I, I, I you know, back to your point. Um, I definitely think that that has something to do with um, the emotion that you're feeling with the music is just kind of our obsession with, um, with melody. Yeah, I'm going to throw something else to you guys, too, just kind of in terms of this, when you're talking about putting a lot of emotion into the song and understanding the melodies and constructions behind it. Because one thing I'm always a huge proponent of is when people are writing music with a lot of emotion, with a lot of authenticity behind it, you can really feel that emotion within the instrumental specifically. And because those instrumentals, it ends up connecting with people in a way that it gives them a tangible explanation for something that is really hard to explain. Maybe like a feeling that they went through was during a certain time and how they connect the song. It's like, Oh, when you're going through, cause I've got songs like this where it's like when I was going through mass amount of depression, what did it feel like? Like, here's a perfect song for you guys. Listen to this and you're going to understand, it, especially you listen to how the instrumentals are constructed and how the vocals kind of match with it as well. And I listen to that song all the time. And I've had people ask me like, well, why do you listen? If it reminds me of that. I'm like, well, it also reminds me of how far I've come since then. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of a connection in that. But one thing that I really got on, a, it was about a couple weeks ago, I was at a bonfire with a couple of people and one guy is just a huge country music fan. And <laughs> him and I, like we, like when it comes to music, him and I don't see eye to eye on anything of like this stuff. So it was really interesting talking with him because we got, we there was something I really figured out and it was talking with him where it came to why people like country music. It's like when you listen to the vocals, you listen to the lyrics, listen to the story that's being told it basically resonates very well with their, the lifestyle that they want that like being like kind of just like simple, just working for a living, being just having fun, living out in a lake, kind of just fishing, just doing whatever. And I'm like, okay, I can kind of understand that because it basically speaks to what they want to do. Like in the instrumental just kind of accent that then I took a look at, it, I'm like, well, for me, it's the same, but in reverse in a way where it's, I listen to the instrumentals and just the way that they speak to me and just listening to them, they just bring out so many different emotions, so many different sounds. And you can really feel a lot of times what the artist was going through and what they were thinking about and how that made them feel within just the, you know, the instrumentals that are coming on here when it's hard, when it's soft, when it's just more (laughs) melodic, when it's just blatantly in your face, full on metal core style, which I absolutely love. And then you add the vocals on top of it. And it's more of like a, a little bit of a guide in a way as well. But where it really comes into is 
and just the way people connect with music and when you're able to really put that out there not only within the lyrics and within the vocals but within the instrumentals at the same point as well you're going to get something where people just connect with it on so many different levels Mm -hmm. to the point where someone can like it because of the story that's being told through the lyrics and I, i can like it because i love the way the emotions of the instrumentals are just being contrived however we like the same song we're both enjoying it it's just how we got there is completely different but it's awesome in its own way dude that's such a you said that perfectly you said that perfectly because it's uh that is why i love music so much is because especially as a musician like i'm able to um you know when i'm listening to to music i can i can shut everything else off in my ear and listen to just the bass line or i can listen to just the drums or i can as i'm listening to music i find myself funneling in and out of all those things you know whereas like for this part i'm i'm listening to the bass and then all of a sudden i love this lead on the guitar and then oh my god i love this i love this vocal melody or i love the lyrics here um you know dude you you said it perfectly like it, it can for it's it's like music is very layered it's kind of like a cake you know like a really nice cake or whatever you know or like a casserole <laughs> like an, on, an onion <laughs> oh or like an ogre ogres have yeah, layers that's, onions that's, have layers. that's where i was headed <laughs> they both have layers <laughs> All right, that's going to have to, I'm going to have to, when I do a preview little shit post video for this podcast, I'm definitely going to have to do another Shrek one because the last one I did was absolutely <laughs> hysterical. So I'm going to have to do this one be, just because of that. And not going to lie, actually pretty happy about that. <laughs> but then again, jumping back into the music as well, just again, like I, like what you're saying, Eli, where it's like you can pick out certain parts. I think a great example of that, and I'm going to go with a band that we mentioned really early on the podcast, his buddy Miles with Saul and their song Brother because – like what I was saying, like when you listen to it, like the drums just stand out so much with how just different they are, how dynamic they are throughout the whole entire thing. But you take a listen to the vocals as well and the story that's being told within that song, especially when you get to the to the bridge of the song where you hear just Blake just screaming, brother, you can hear the pain and emotion within those vocals as well. So you yeah. can see so many different things working within that song. And it's all differently layered throughout every aspect of it. It's, mm-hmm. It really is incredible when you're just able to focus not only on the individual aspects of the song or the individual layers of the song, but then how they all come together and work as a whole. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. That is, that is the beauty of music, man. Like that's your, you, you, I, like I said, I think you said it best. Uh, that, that is why I love music so much. And, and I, I haven't, ha- I haven't met somebody who's well, you know, outside of like, you know, people in my band where we can talk about that, but that was really well articulated. Uh, Cause that's exactly why I love music. You can love it. Uh, you know, the same song for three or four different reasons, you know, it could be the same song, or like you said, you could, uh, you could just be hanging out with your buddy and love the same song, but you like it for different reasons. Like, um, you know, that's, that's why I love music so much. Yeah. And when it comes to distance as well, not only distance, but when it comes to the other songs that are out there as well, that you have out there with midnight and overthinking as well, it seems like when I was really going through them, they all kind of have a very similar theme to them at the same time as well. So when you guys are writing these songs, like, was there a similar theme that was going on not only within the three songs that you have put out there right now, but within the rest of the album as well? Or was it all something that was just coming completely different from different aspects of life? Um, I think like, go ahead. Dan. I, th- I think like a lot of it's just sort of like, I, I suppose like, you know, the, the way that we sound with some things, like I think, like, like when we were talking earlier about like how we don't put a ceiling on our things and we let the song guide us. I think a lot of that is just our, our voice on things. Like, I don't think like we, we finished a song and at least for me, when I jump into a new song, I don't really consciously think of the other songs. I just think like, well, how's this sound? Like I, I think of each song, if I was, if it was the only thing that I was, if I was putting it out as a single, like they all wind up on an album, but like, I, I like to judge and write and think about things my personally like just on its own without the influence of other pieces like sure maybe we wrote a slow song and if this song's sounding slow too i'm not gonna say well we did we did something kind of like this on this one like if it sounds good on this one it sounds good on this one understandable kind of like the where i was trying to go with that question is just because when i was taking a listen, look at the three songs and i totally understand where you're coming from where you're not really trying to plan out your let like again letting the song dictate itself seeing where you're going with how it's going to sound and what meaning is going to come across on it. You're just going to let it dictate itself. 
However, on on the three singles that you have out so far, yeah. when I went through them and when I went through them deep and trying to understand the meaning of them as well, really looking at the lyrics as well, because I always go in deep like that with these songs. Yeah. One thing I kind of noticed was like there was a similar pattern that was going on, but at times, you know, when you're writing something and the song might just dictate it, like it could easily just happen. It could be co- sheer coincidence where all of a sudden you're writing something and they all kind of have the same kind of theme and style to them in terms of the meaning of the song. However, you didn't necessarily mean to have that happen. It's just the way that the songs are being written, the way that they were dictating themselves. It just happens like that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I will say that, yeah, like there was definitely a, um, there was a collective effort to to make this way more emotional. Like if you look at kind of like our old stuff, I think not that the lyrics were mundane or anything, because uh, I'll never take that away from our singer, Mike. I think he's an excellent lyricist, but um if you look at this album in the context of the last one we did, uh, this is a lot more poetic. It's a lot deeper. It's a lot darker. And that's on purpose. That's because that's the level to which we wanted to go. We wanted to, um, you know, like on the last record, there's a lot more of, um, lyrics that are just, um, just in the context of this song, we're just going to do because it's a catchy hook and, um, you know, and this is what we're talking about in this song. And it's just very kind of rigid. Um, you know, it's very formulated. Whereas this one, like you said, there is an overarching theme of this of this record. Um, and it all came from the same place of just like, let's tap into the deepest, darkest places, you know, we've been and let's, um, uh, you know, let's let's put words to those collectively, you know, this song's going to be about this emotion, and maybe it ties into this song and, you know, whatever. And in fact, like you just said, distance and midnight are tied into each other distance is about, you know, uh, incredible loss. And then midnight is about losing yourself, you know, and, and they are tied in to get together. That's why the music videos are tied in together. Um, you know, that that was on purpose. Um, and if you listen to them in the context of, of, you know, if you were to listen to Distance and Midnight as one song, um, you know, maybe maybe then, you know, it makes a little bit more sense. But that's that is the idea. The the whole record. And in fact, there's there's a couple more songs that are tied into to each other um, on the record. There's a song called Rain. And that was just originally just going to be an interlude. And it then we purposefully tied it into the next song called Heavy Hearts lyrically. Um, you know, the chord progression, um, you know, the, in fact, like, uh, the bridge of heavy hearts is rain too. Yeah. So we, we bring the instrumentals and the lyric or maybe not the lyrics, but we bring the instrumentals back for the bridge of that song. Um, so yeah, there, there is a lot of that, uh, in this record of, um, telling a collective story, uh, with, with all the songs, not just one or, or not each into, you know, this song means this, or this one, you know, we wrote this because it's got a catchy hook and, or, you know, we like the chorus of this one. We built around that. Uh, we did a lot of that on better moments and we weren't happy with it. So we collectively were just like, let's put together a piece of art. This album is, is, is art to us. And, and we want to tell a story. And that's why, like Dan said, when we wrote some songs that didn't fit on the record, we took them off and replaced them um, because we wanted this album to, t- to tell a story. And so, um, so yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. There definitely is a theme to it. But that just shows the dedication as well in terms of like what you're talking about with Dan, just like talking about, you know, scrapping a couple songs a couple months beforehand and writing new songs just due to the fact that they didn't necessarily fit on the record. It just makes sense and it just speaks to the whole entire overarching theme of we're going with something a lot deeper, a lot more personal. We're trying to put out all this emotion in there as well. And if these songs necessarily don't resonate as well on the record as other ones could yeah let's take them out let's put other ones in there to really bring back that story and calling this album distance especially given the when you're talking about distance and midnight with the meanings behind them when it's like losing losing a relationship with someone and losing yourself at the same time as well it makes so much sense because you're kind of just losing yourself and you're kind of distancing yourself from not only other people but yourself as well and then take a look at overthinking as well because when i dove deep in it what i got the mean out of it was it was like about a relationship that ended yet that person is always kind of stuck in your head and you're always overthinking every aspect of life because that person is consistently stuck in your mind it's just influencing all your decisions so you're not only losing your grip on like what's going on you're losing your real grip on reality within yourself as well and the reason why i stuck it like really struck a chord with it because when i was going through all my crap like and all the depression stuff at like second half of 2017, beginning of 2018, that was pretty much what was happening. So mm-hmm. listening to overthinking, it just like, just not like hearing some of the ways that everything was progressed and 
even with different sounds where it's like, you know, you open up that song and it kind of reminded me a little bit more of like a pop alt rock sound. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you just kind of just completely change it up. It just becomes more hard rock, more dynamic with the drumming. And you kind of get more of that hardness in there too with some unclean vocals. I'm just like, holy crap, there's so much more going on here. But what you guys really did was you really told the story through the instrumentals on that song. In my, in, in my perspective, because of what I went through, it really resonated well with, again, giving that story and giving that time in my life. If I'm trying to explain to someone, when you listen, you're going to get that tangible feeling of what it was like to go through something like that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I appreciate that. You know, because yeah. like uh, straight up, dude, uh, our singer, Mike, he tells me all the time. He's like, dude, uh, you know, like he's like he, he he said he even told me last week he's like you're you're an inspiration for a lot of my lyrics like uh <laughs> if he himself has not gone through it he's seen me go through it and then he articulates it for me in a way that i could never say it and there's been there's absolutely been times that uh uh i won't i won't even i'm not even ashamed to say it like our music has just made me ball my eyes out because because uh he he saw as a friend you know, uh, he's like, he's like my brother. Like we we're, we we're really, really tight. We're really, you know, really close. And he saw what I was going through poetically, uh, articulated it for me. And then we wrote this song that this, the music, uh, I was able to convey what I was feeling through the music. Uh, not, not just myself, but, but the guys helped me articulate, uh, how I was feeling, you know, unbeknownst to them probably, but, um, <laughs> You know, you're exactly right. Like you nailed it, dude. Like that's and that's also why I love our music because it's it's very intimate for me and 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 the guys. Like this is a a very uh, intimate part of who we are. It's it's a part of who we are. It's our you know at least for me it's it's absolutely who I am. So um, it really does mean a lot when when uh, people pay attention to that or feel the same way that I do. You know about about the music because. Uh, like you said, the music articulates how, how uh, we feel as well as well as the lyrics. Like you, you, you get the feeling, you know. Understandable. And Dan, when it comes to like helping write this stuff as well, when it comes to articulating kind of stuff that Eli has been going through, yeah, yeah, yeah. going through it, what's it like to try and like, what's what kind of the inspiration that comes when you're trying to create sounds that really match that? What's, what's that process like? Because I'm, I've never really asked this question to anyone before. And I feel like this is the perfect time to ask yeah. that because I'm really curious, especially given all we've talked about. I've talked about this stuff, like with that emotional attachment to songs, I've talked about that a crap ton. So I'm like, now I'm getting a whole nother perspective on it. And I want to hear this. Yeah. So I guess like one thing, like, I guess when I listen to a, something like that and all that, I, I really just try and get in the, cause you know, I, I'm not using words or anything myself. Like, you know, it's just me and the guitar and things that I can do with that. And I just try and go with like, how, how does the, how's this make me feel? Like what's the, what's the moods happening and just using like, I think I try to think of guitar like my guitar playing too in a very like lyrical way in a sense where like I I try and like like I mentioned earlier I'm, like we're always thinking about the melody stuff so I'm trying to think of like well like the song feels like this so like how can I complement or pull it in different ways to add that little spice in there because like I mean we're all just one piece of like this big music stew and um, casserole yes <laughs> And so like if, if, if what's there already sounds really sad, but like we're kind of talking about things that are like wanting to pull something or add like a flare of, you know, anger or something, you know, uh, but what's there right now doesn't have that yet. Like it's up to the next piece that goes in to add that, that spice. So it's always, it's, it's a lot of trial and error and listening to what's there, putting something in, listening, just thinking like, all right, is this the piece? Does this feel good? Like, is this, and I think a lot of time, like, when you do hit that the thing that's the right one like you know like it, there's all of a sudden that there's just all those light bulb moments that come off and i think we all have those like collectively together like when the piece is there we're all like we're just nodding and smiling like yep that's it oh dude i'll freak <laughs> out like i'll just i'll start screaming or like we we have a lot of fun you, you get that, that the rhythmitis right oh yeah yeah <laughs> get that chronic illness but yeah dude like i i like I think if I can, if I could add a little bit, like sometimes like, I think distance again, I keep bringing it up, but it's a really good example of like, um, so we, when we wrote that, <clears throat> I wasn't there for the initial writing session, but they, you know, the guys wrote the instrumentals of the intro all the way up to the buildup, like where, where the scream comes in, that was all written by Jake, Mike and, and Dan, um, 
uh, instrumentally. And all, all, you know, all they sent, they bounced out the, the instrumentals and then Mike was immediately inspired. And, and I think within a couple of days, he put the first verse down on it. It was exactly what it is now. He came up with that right there. And that was, you know, sometimes, sometimes we'll come up, we'll write an entire song before Mike puts his lyrics on it. There are songs on this record that, that, that happened, but distance was <clears throat> one that, you know, we wrote the, the, that intro instrumentally, then Mike put his lyrics on and we were all again, like that lit another fire. It gave me goosebumps, just like that intro that, um, that defined where the song was going to go instrumentally from there, because I, I, I was very cognizant of, you know, man, these lyrics, like um, I really want to hit hard here uh, on this, on this next spot. And we all, you know, we all agreed to that. We, we, you know, and so that's, that, push the direction of the song um were the lyrics you know it was just yeah. like you know that's that that that's a time that that the, the lyrics affected the the direction of the song sometimes it doesn't happen that way sometimes you know the song we just take the song where we're and we'll do we'll write an entire song in one session and, and then mike will add the lyrics later maybe we'll adjust adjust the music structure after the lyrics are put on from there, um, maybe we won't change the structure at all. And he'll just, and he'll just write his lyrics to it. It really depends, but uh, you know, distance is a great example of the, the lyrics pushing us in a direction. And, and then we took the instrumentals from there after that. And then Mike added in his screams and, and stuff. It was just like, it's just kind of magic, dude. Like sometimes you just can't explain some, some songs just, uh, you know, write themselves and that, and, and that was one, or it just, we, it, it, it took us in a direction. And then there's the times like where we, where you really got to push for like, you know what you want, but it's not there yet. So like, uh, what, probably what, um, when, when the record is out, the, probably the heaviest song on this record, or at least tied for heaviest is a, a song called heavy hearts. And that's a song that pretty much everything in that draft actually wasn't what was in our initial demo like we yeah. like we we did the we did the initial demo and then we reworked like a, a part like a, a whole like we did a new verse kind of a thing and then we listened to it again and then we changed another part and mm -hmm. we pretty much got to a point like where we knew what we wanted with it and where we landed with that song nothing in the final draft was in the first draft yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow but then again one thing that this is all speaks to and just the difference in the way that these songs have been constructed is again, where it all boils down to is on this album, you were letting the songs dictate themselves. You were letting everything just dictate itself. You weren't, if you weren't necessarily forcing anything, you were just letting it happen. If you really were going to push on something and if, you know, if it's all of a sudden, you know, it, you wanted to push on something, but all of a sudden you kind of came back. It's like, okay, this doesn't work out, but this would work out. Then you just make that change. You call the audible, you go, you, you Omaha, like Peyton Manning would back oh, like yeah. five years ago. <laughs> You're just looking like, okay, so we're Omaha, Omaha. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, boom, you, you, you figure out exactly what you want to do. You got to hit, there you go. Yeah. But the biggest thing is just when it comes to letting the songs dictate themselves, even for my, like my mind as well, cause I'm not in that songwriting process. I didn't understand exactly what all that was, but I could understand the concept behind it. But hearing you guys talk about it, where it's, okay, it could go from any different form. It could start all these different ways. It could start with the instrumental, start with the vocals, start with the lyrics. It could start with anything <laughs> and it could just go forward like that. I've, I've heard a lot of bands do some of that stuff as well. One of my favorite instances of it is like Rise Against where they'll come up with like, they let the uh, instrumentals kind of come up with everything first. But then someone like Tim McGrath, what he'll end up doing is he'll end up just like running through the song and trying to find the vocal pattern for it as well. And he won't sing lyrics like he'll speak gibberish, but like try and hit different pitches at the same time just to see what works to see what really hits on those songs. And I, I mean, it's my favorite band, so I absolutely love how it works out. So but in terms of hearing what you guys are talking about, it's like, OK, sometimes, you know, the vocals come first. Sometimes it's like the instrumentals and how these guitar riffs or how these different drum patterns come first. And you just build off of that and you let the song dictate itself. Then you get something like distance where all of a sudden it just has so many different layers, so many different parts. It's so dynamic throughout the whole entire thing. But the biggest thing is because you let the song dictate itself, everything works out. Everything runs together so smoothly. You're not really forcing anything in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could, you know, I, I've seen Mike do that too, where if he feels really inspired about an idea, he'll immediately just start, uh, he'll start uh, singing, singing some melodies and, um, and, 
you know, it's a beautiful thing, dude. Like, like, I think that we all uh, inspired each other. I know that I took a lot of inspiration off of uh, each and every one of these guys uh, through this process uh, of writing distance, uh, the, the album. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really proud of that. It's, it's something that, you know, I'm going to look back on. And, um, you know, if, if every album that a band puts out is, is a big deal um, for, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things. And, and I am, I'm really happy to have put, put together this record uh, at this time. I needed it personally. I needed it. Um, and I, you know, I can at least speak for some of the guys I know they did too. And uh, I, I know that we're really, really excited for people to hear it. Um, I think it's going to be a defining chapter of our band. Um, who knows what's going to happen with, you know, the uh, everything going on in the world, but at least, you know, at least we can put this out something that we're very proud of. And, and, and I think that, um, our fans who've been along with us at any stage in our history will, will really enjoy this record. There's something on this for everybody. Um, and it's a, it's a very honest, a very, very honest and vulnerable record. And, um, that's, you know, that's what we're kind of best at, you know, we're really good at being honest and vulnerable. And, um, I think we went away from that on the last album cycle. Um, but, but we're, we're back to it on this one. And, um, you know, I, I think, I, I think, I think it shows, um, I'm, I'm really excited. Like the, uh, um, the response to everything, uh, it's kind of exactly what I, what I hoped it would, what it, what it would do. So it's, it's really cool that people can relate with it and, um, and people, uh, people get it, you know, like, it's really cool when people get it, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> like, like they understand what we were going for on this song or, or whatever, like they, you know, we've got really uh, smart people listening to our music and like, you kind of look through the comments and stuff. It's like, it's kind of like this or this. And like, you know, it's like, Oh shit. Like they get it. You know, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. When it comes to some, just going through it right now, going through with you guys with the creation process, I'm going to make a prediction on this, but I've got a feeling this is going to be a very, very, very safe prediction. Like this isn't wild and out and crazy at all. This, I feel like this is a very safe call, but when it comes to this album, when it comes out after you really see it hit after the first couple of months, what this album's going to do with distance is going to end up catapulting you guys into that next level or next two levels of just like that success within the music industry. And the reason for that is because when it comes to different albums and it comes to different bands and when they put that full on authenticity in there and they really put all this heart, all this emotion and they let the songs dictate themselves in order to express that, what ends up happening is, is people connect with them in so many different ways like we were talking about. And what ends up happening after that is because so many people connect them in different ways, they end up this music just gets end up being shared because of the fan base just being so into it, and people that have never heard of it before all of a sudden hear their friends talk about. It. They end up checking it out. They end up getting the song played from, and all of a sudden they jump into it, and it just keeps happening like that again and again and again. The best example I have of this recently is Polaris with the Death of Me album because they mm -hmm. blew up completely after that. Like they were already getting pretty pretty getting to be pretty big, but after that came up because of just how people connected with it. They just ended up just growing ex, ex, like exponentially off of it. And when it comes to distance as well, one thing I'm seeing with it is, especially after the first three singles, it has that same emotion to it. Much different sound, however, but the emotion and the way that people connect with it and the way that I connect with it is almost exactly the same. So when you get that heavy of a connection there with the music, yeah, the fans are going to end up resonating with it well. The, everyone's going to want to be listening to it. Everyone's going to want to have it played on the radio. People are going to be begging for it to be played on any different radio station. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, Spotify uh, monthly listeners, because right now when I looked, you guys are at 182,000 at the recording of this right now. All of a sudden, by the time the album comes out, you might be up to 200,000. But then by, after about a month, all of a sudden, you're going to end up seeing like 500, 600,000. I've got a feeling that this is going to happen because of how solid this album is and how solid the songwriting process is on it. Well, th thank you. I mean, that's, thank you. That's a huge compliment. I, I appreciate it. You know, I think at this point in the game for us, um, you know, back, back when I was younger, uh, you know, I, I think I think that I, I would I would have expectations and stuff. And my biggest you know lesson that I've learned and, and something that I would, uh, you know, caution, you know, any artist that, that's coming up is like, you know, just if you focus on the art, every, everything else will will take care of itself in its own way, you know, like you're, you know, our, our, our band's path to quote unquote success will be completely different than the next band or the band before us or after us or, you know, so 
you know, I think that to, to be here today, to write this record uh, and know what it is right now, and just to be able on November 20th to, to put to put that album out uh, is success in itself. I'm really proud of, of to even be here today, to be doing it, to uh, been fortunate enough to, to tour um, as much as we have and have the fans. Like, I know a lot of bands say this, but like, I, our, we have the best fans in the world. Um, and, and they're so loyal to us, uh, even, even through all the bullshit that we've been through. It's really cool that, to, to still have people passionate about our music. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, I'm not going to have any expectations. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm thankful to even have this opportunity to, to I, like, how cool is this to, you know, when I was 10 years old and I would be in class and like, I would, I, I would, I would, cause I always knew I wanted to be a musician and, and be a rock star. And I would draw like, uh, pictures of my dad's drum set. And then I draw a picture of the bass next to it. And that's like what I, that's what I would doodle in class. I wouldn't pay attention. I'd just be, cause I'm going to be a rock star someday. And, and, you know, if you would have told 10 year old Eli that, uh, that he was actually going to get out and, and have, you know, be in a band for almost 10 years and, and be able to, to earn your right to, to tour the country and, and um, play in Canada and play in Mexico and um, even have fans abroad. Like that is a dream come true. I, you know, my, my dreams have come true in a lot of ways. And so I'm, you know, really thankful and, and uh, excited for this album to come out. Um, you know, and, and like I said, no expectations, just let it do its thing and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I'm and so like listening to as well. Of course, once concerts come back and once bands are able to start touring, like there's there's one band that I've seen that's been rising very rapidly in the scene over the past couple of years, and I could see them easily doing a European tour, looking for a band to come along with them to open for them. And after listening just to the the first couple of songs on Distance, I feel like it would fit in perfectly with like a like a little bit more of like a similar but also different sound at the same time as well, and. Honestly, it's also from the same state that you guys are in. I could see, I could all, I could see this happening where all of a sudden I prevail goes overseas and you guys follow with them. Oh yeah. Well, uh, we, we actually know, um, Eric, uh, from I prevail, yeah. he came from the same local scene as us. So, uh, when we, uh, when we play shows, like he, come, it's, it's so crazy because he's like fucking famous now. Um, but like, <laughs> shout out to Eric, uh, if, you know, if he even will hear this, like, uh, he has been such a homie to us, like, he was there from the beginning when we were the big band in, in the scene and, and he was, he was like the, you know, the local guy and then his band blew up and, and he never forgot about us. Like now we're, you know, small potatoes completely. And he is just the, you know, um, he, well, he's, he's the only guy and I don't, I don't want to disrespect any of the other guys in the band. I don't know them personally, but I know Eric and uh, he has been a homie uh, our, you know, for a very long time. So if, he, uh, if he's, if he's not on tour, he still comes to our shows. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. He comes to our shows. and like, it's, it's, it's cool because my, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law are huge fans of, uh, of I prevail. And, um, I'm like, Hey, that's, uh, that's Eric from I prevail over there. I'm like, Oh my God. So they always they can get pictures <laughs> with them. So it's like, it's cool. It's cool that he comes to our shows. It doesn't matter how big or small he still comes out and hangs out and, uh, says what's up. And, um, you know, he's, he's been a good friend. So yeah, if, you know, if they ever, we obviously would always be open to, uh, to playing gigs with one of the biggest bands in the world, uh, you know, no complaints <laughs> there, but even still his friendship is enough, you know, we appreciate that. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 you definitely have a good friend. You definitely have a, a good, I'll say a good fan right there, because I mean, it doesn't matter how big he's, he's still coming to your show, still support you guys. I mean, if, if that's the case, this might sound a little bit selfish, but you guys got it in already, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of like the, the touring world is like, you know, how bands look at it and we we've done it. We've done it that way too. You know, like when, when bands are putting tours together, you have to look at it. Like the headlining band says, okay, is this band going to draw kind of a deal, you know, at the level to which we're going to benefit from their fans coming out. And so, you know, like when they first blew up, they were doing a lot of support tours. And now that they're headlining, I mean, you know, like, I mean, they had Papa Roach and like, I mean, so we are so small potatoes. If they were to take us out, it's like, it's a favor to us kind of a deal because, um, cause they are so big now, you know, it's, it's, it's not something to where like we're even in the same like tier of band at all. Like they are, you know, huge. Um, 
but you know, like, like I said, we would never say no, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if that opportunity came, I'd be, you know, I know we would be really excited about it, but, um, you know, definitely what you don't want to do is be one of those bands that's just like, Hey man, we should tour together. We should tour together because they get that all the time. They get that everywhere yeah. they go. And, and, you know, you spot it from a mile away. It's like, I don't want our friendship with Eric to be disingenuous. I don't want him to be like, Oh, well, they're only friends with me because I can give them an opportunity because as a band who's, you know, done, we've grown enough that happens to you, you know, and you can see it. It's like, dude, you're just talking to me because, um, cause you think I can offer you something when the reality is I can't offer you a damn thing. I'm a, I'm a small potato myself. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I would never want our friendship with him to, to be, uh, uh, disingenuous, you know, if, if they, if they felt like they could, you know, wanted to offer us something like that, we absolutely would accept, I'm sure. But, um, other than that, we're cool with being homies. That's a gr that's a great way to put it. The reason why I brought up like why I could see it happening is again is just the blend that you have on distance and the and the other songs that are out there right now as well. I got that exact same feel as I did with Thy Prevail. So fans of your guys would end up coming out and they would end up supporting I Prevail at the exact same point as well. It probably just as feverishly because again, there's all this different connection that's there. However, I do totally understand what you're saying. I too totally agree where it's like you and Eric have been friends for quite a while because you guys came up in the same scene and you don't want that to be disingenuous at all. You want to keep that as authentic as possible with that friendship. You don't want to end up turning to be them. You guys hassling them like, Oh, Hey, you know, take us on tour. Like, no, it's, it's kind of like, we're going to keep doing our thing. We're going to keep focusing on our thing. If something like that happens and you want it, we are more than willing to accept it. Yeah. However, yeah. however, if not, we're not going to hold anything against you guys on it because we know what it's like and we're going to keep doing our own thing. Yeah. I mean, oddly enough, when they, when they put out that Taylor Swift cover, that's when like they, they first, they first uh, really blew up and uh, they threw us a bone and had us open their, their, uh, their Detroit show <clears throat> back when they first got really big. In fact, one of our really good friends um, was, uh, was their fill in bass player for a while, Tony. Um, so when they were on that first, that first initial upswing it was like just before they did the i think i think it was just prior to the hollywood undead tour that they did back then but this is like when they first went viral uh when they put that ep out um you know they had us on their hometown show um and we uh we opened for the tour package and uh, obviously it was sold out we made a lot of fans that night um you know like that was i mean it was you know we, we definitely i agree like our, our our fan base is there is there is some oops sorry there is similar uh demographics involved there and and yeah absolutely there's not a doubt in my mind uh we could put on a hell of a, a of a show together um you know we've already done it once i know that we're especially where they're at now uh they have done so much touring stuff not like they're a really tight live band um they've only gotten better through the years um so yeah, I mean, it would, it would be freaking dope, you know, make no mistake about it. It would be a lot of fun. Um, but you know, definitely not going to hassle them about it. <clears throat> yeah, cause I've seen them play live once and it was in October of 2019 when they were on the degenerate sewer with bear tooth and a day to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh dear God. The only thing I, the only thing I wanted it, it, this is, this might sound bad, but it's, it's coming from a place of just how I like to see shows it's they had it was Beartooth and I prevailed in a day to remember. It's just with the amount of energy that Beartooth puts out. I thought they should have been right before a day to remember because a day to remember can easily kind of match that. And mm -hmm. I probably would have been a great lead into it. Mm -hmm. So it's just and just because Caleb Shum was just a freaking madman up there on stage. Oh, it's, it's, it's so hard to match that kind of energy. It, <laughs> like I was telling, I talk to people like I swear to God, it's like that guy has to do like drink like three Red Bulls and take two adrenaline shots <laughs> straight into the ass just to go on stage and do that for thir like 30, 45 minutes. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's so crazy, too. When you think about the context of like I prevail, you just said them in the same line of Beartooth and a day to remember like that is such a big deal like they yeah. made it you know what I mean like they fucking made it dude <laughs> that's so cool like that's my biggest thing when like when Eric comes around I was like bro you fucking made it that's so dope like uh yeah that's so cool side note of course but yeah yeah I, I agree uh Beartooth is insane live we got to see them at uh we played Warp Tour Dan when when did we play Warp Tour was it 2018 last it, it, well, it was the last one. So yeah, 2018. 18, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we played the D Detroit show and uh, my big, my big bands that I wanted to see were Beartooth and uh, I wanted to see um, Don Broco and oh, yeah. which, which we did. And uh, then I wanted to see um, Chelsea grin because okay. they, 
oh my god dude like that was awesome <laughs> that was so much fun yeah I, it's just somewhere it's like when you're talking about you talk, like talking about your friend your friend with eric with that friend, you're talking about like his band the exact same sense as bands like you know bear tooth just because of, with caleb Schell, and you're talking about a day to remember as well which i mean they like at like major music festivals they can easily headline that kind of stuff and like they're on the <laughs> they're in the exact same sense because i still remember when they open up with bow down to just seeing some of the bodies fly i'm just like <gasps> mm-hmm. ah, i'm at home now even though yeah. i was in minneapolis oh, yeah. for the show i was like yeah this feels right yeah they go hard dude i'm i'm like i said i'm really excited uh for them um it, it is really cool to to um to be able to ha- have been been around uh been around and see it from where it started to to where it is now like you just kind of like wow you know like that mm-hmm. that's it's incredible it's incredible because like you kind of you kind of hear um you know like uh, you hear stories about people who who knew famous people or whatever, or like, oh, I knew them back when. But like, we got to we we were in the scene. We got to see it happen, and uh, it's really cool to see. It was like it's real, dude. Like they are one of the biggest bands in the world now. Like that is wild. And it's not like you get to see them from when they started to where they are now, but because again, you're still friends with them, you get to see where they are now and you're going to be able to continue to get to enjoy where they're going to go in the future. Seeing your friend continue to get that kind of success and keep growing throughout the whole entire thing. Because again, they were going to be on tour. If it wasn't for COVID, they were going to be on tour with ice nine kills, Papa Roach and five finger death punch. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a, that's ice nine kills. By the way, when you, when you mentioned them earlier, I, watched them at a show back in oh god it was i think it was early 2011 they came to jackson michigan and um i re- i just because my my buddy at the time was uh experimenting with booking shows and he was trying to be a promoter and he booked them on their tour and they came out and they put on a, an amazing show they immediately were one of like my favorite bands um and this was before i had like really decided to get into a band and stuff so i was just trying to get my feet wet with uh local music and stuff and ice nine kills uh back in 2011 like they were something incredibly special and um to see them still going at it at a high level uh is like that's a testament that they love what they do you know like they love what they do and and uh it's just you know i kind of you know i i hope that we're kind of that way too that um you know, we never lose the the fire for it um, because, you know, they've been through member changes and, um, and but they're still doing it and they're going through a yeah. pandemic and they haven't given up. They yeah. still I mean, do they're, it. they're one of those bands that like are those innovator types. Like I, I think earlier you, you said they even have an app. Yeah, they have an app. I, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's, like, yeah. Yeah, has an app. Real quick. that's sweet. The heck is <laughs> like it? they were they are so solid live. Like and they then, like are, they. Um, they turn all that real... work to like they do like all those like the like the classic like gothic story kind of things like like that's a lot of work like that's innovation yeah yeah like they like they literally have an app for it that's sweet and I'm, I'm <laughs> a, I am a part of it <laughs> is... and I'm I'm absolutely happy about it because like what you were saying you know, like when you saw them and you just became a fan of them like after seeing that show that's what happened with me because I really didn't know much of their music. And then I saw them on November 2nd, 2019. So this is two days after Halloween. I was here in Milwaukee. They were on tour with uh, Awake at Last, Light the Torch, and Fit hey. for a King. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. So let's go check this out. Yeah. And I didn't want – like I didn't want to – I felt like not going to the show because I had to work overtime like that whole entire day. And I like finished work an hour before the show was supposed to start, and I'm just beat. I'm like, okay, I'll go, whatever. I've I haven't gotten into a band so fast after seeing a lot because I heard two songs from theirs beforehand. I went to go see the show. They played 19 songs over the course of two hours. Nice. And what I described was it didn't matter where you were because I was in every different spot you could imagine. I was up front. I was I was in the crowd that was getting constantly pushed around. I was off to the side at some point. I was on the edge of the mosh pit. I was getting destroyed in the mosh pit and destroying people at the same time too. It didn't matter where you were and how you were enjoying the show, but you were having an incredible time regardless. Yeah. And man. it went from like me just like not really knowing the band at all to them becoming my second favorite band of all time, like within the span of maybe a month. Dude, they, yeah, they are so freaking good. So good. Like, I, you can't take anything away from that band. Like, uh, I think the biggest thing you could say is like, how in the hell are they not any bigger than what they are? Like, mm-hmm. especially after all this time, because they are impeccable live. They write really good music. Um, they're dedicated. Like, um, obviously they are really successful, but like with all the big tours that like, how are they not any bigger than what, like, and, and they are big, you know, and I don't want to take anything away from those guys, but, 
um like you would you would think they would just be like a massive freaking band by you know by this point uh but uh that's why i respect the shit out of them is because um they're still they're still committed and they they love music they clearly love writing and they love everything about about being a band and uh, i really respect that and admire that and I, I i hope that i never lose that fire just constantly use that as inspiration as well if you need to because when even when i come down the podcast well i've got like a what I call my quote unquote hit list, which is basically like my top guess I ever want to have on the podcast. And Spencer Charnas is my number two pick. Oh yeah, dude. I'm sure he'd be a great interview. Cause he's like, man, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's like been there, done everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like he, I mean, he really is that band and like, he like nothing but respect for, for him and that band. Like they, they have done everything. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, They've done everything and then some, and they're going to keep doing more. That's the thing. Yep. Yep. So it's like, if, if you ever get, to, again, if you ever get to a point where it's all of a sudden you're like, you're thinking like, you know, maybe you're kind of getting a little bit worn out at times. It's like, okay, maybe, and you're kind of, maybe, if you ever start questioning, just take a look at Ice Nine Kills and just like, you're going to end up getting that fire back in you and just looking at all this shit there. And it's like, okay, that's inspiration right there. I'm going with that. And then yeah, all of a sudden, dude. next thing yeah. you know, you're going to pick up. And, but what ended up being actually happy with you guys as well is, after distance comes out, if you ever get to that point, you might just look back at distance and get that inspiration just funneling back into you again. Yeah, man. I, I think so too. Um, I, I'm really, <clears throat> cause I was just, I was hanging out with uh, my singer or our singer Mike last night. And, um, and, you know, I, I'm really excited to see where, uh, where the album takes us, you know, um, it, it, it could take us nowhere. It could take us, you know, a lot of places we, we don't know. That's the beautiful part about what we do is it, you know, each album cycle is like, it's, uh, it's an adventure, you know, it's like, it's a new defining chapter and, and where are you going to go? And, and I, I'm, I'm really excited for, um, you know, I think ultimately what, what I want for the record is for it, you know, first of all, for something for us to be very proud of. And, and secondly, uh, for how shitty 2020 has been, I hope that it's something special for anybody that, that hears it, that they can shut off the world and it takes them to a different place uh, mentally and emotionally, uh, good or bad, you know, just, just shut off 2020. That's, that's what we're trying to do with this, with this record is, um, you know, give something, give something to people, uh, to, to take their minds off of things. And I think that was the really cool thing about when we talked to the label in Vogue, uh, when we were talking about releasing this record, they're like, guys, you still want to do it this year. And like, yeah, we're like, yeah, without a doubt. And they're like, they're like, yeah, we support that. Uh, like, um, we want this to be <clears throat> Nick said it actually the owner he was like I I, I want I want this to be a, a light for people in in such a dark time and and uh I, I couldn't agree more with that I'm really excited and thankful that in Vogue um has brought our vision to light in a lot of respects with this uh record and um you know that is the goal is to is to be a light for for, for people right now I think in the end, like when it comes down, like I made that safe prediction, I still stand by it. I think the biggest thing is just going to be once the album comes out, because again, listening to the songs that have been out right now, just the way they connect with the listener, the way they just have that emotional attachment to them is absolutely incredible. It's just the biggest key to making sure that this album makes that safe prediction happen is just making sure that it gets out into the ears of people that necessarily haven't listened to Boys of Fall at all. And then when it comes to the fans that are out there right now that are really going to get into it, just keep passing along to people just because I, I know with a lot of people that are in the music scene, right? Or not necessarily music, but like a lot of like the, you know, your are I'm trying to put it this way. Like for me, it's just like, cause I, a lot of my friends, no one gets into rock and metal like I do anywhere near that it's like everyone's kind of listening to more country pop kind of stuff or alt rock but when it comes to more of that stuff just like with that more alternative rock sound to it along mixing with that with the heavier vocals and more melodic styles just the certain melodies as well it's they're gonna like people that necessarily aren't into as like heavy stuff as someone like i am they're gonna be able to really get into this because of the way that emotional attachment has become through those you know softer more alt rock kind of parts just through the melodies and the way everything is constructed you're gonna be able to feel it in a completely another way and then when those hard parts come in with the unclean vocals the harder instrumentation that is still very melodic and also drawn out the same point as well to keep that same pacing they're gonna be able to get into it as well due to the fact that again it's just all the uh, that story that's being told through the instrumentals through the vocals and just the way everything is basically constructed to put that out there it's gonna happen it just has to get into the ears of the people well, I, I, I want to say like, thank you for, uh, for doing this, especially, um, you know, because this is a part of how people are going to hear about us and, and the way that you heard about us, um, 
is how music uh, gets spread around to people who haven't heard it. So like, like, like us even having this podcast with you today is a testament to how, um, how music gets, gets shared. Like, thank you to the people who, who, uh, who shared, uh, shared the music so that we could be on this podcast today. This is how it works and not just us, but do it for any band that you listen to, because this is how things happen for artists, period. Um, so yeah, we're very, very fortunate and thankful. And, um, and you know, it's, it's crazy. Cause this is, um, this is the second podcast I think we've done in, maybe we've done more, uh, maybe make, I, I can't remember, but in, in prep, no, we have, uh, Mike, Mike did one this summer in preparation for the album cycle. I've got another one scheduled in November, um, that I'm going to be doing and, uh, possibly, possibly, you know, s- some more. So it, point, point being like, we're, we're talking on, on audiences that maybe who haven't heard us before. And, and this is the point, you know, it's like, it's really, really cool. It's a great way to, um, make, you know, bring awareness to, to what you're doing as an artist. And, and again, we wouldn't be here if, if a bunch of people hadn't told you about it. So like, <laughs> this is how music gets shared around and, and do it for all your favorite bands. Like it really helps. No, very much so. And especially I got to just give a couple shouts to Jeff and Christy because they're the two on my Instagram games that just kept pushing for this even harder than anyone else did. So I want to give two shout outs to them. So if they're listening to this, which I know they probably are. Yeah. To both of you. Thank you very much because this was absolutely incredible to really go in deep with you guys on the music and really kind of talk about not only what we talked about initially with, you know, the music industry right now, especially with COVID, everything that's going through and then going really deep into this album and the creation process, the thought process behind everything and then, of course, fun stuff with like I Prevail, Ice Nine Kills, all that kind of fun stuff as well. I mean, it was it was incredible just to go that deep into it in a way that I necessarily like. I've gone deep into albums with other bands before, but this was something that felt just a little bit different. But it felt a little bit different in the best way possible. Awesome, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, yeah. you're you're really really good at what you do. So, um, and and uh, we're we're an open book as far as that goes. I, I have no problem tell, telling <laughs> telling people that. Uh, that we are depressed and write depressing music. So, <laughs> well, that's that's that, that, hey, being open book. You're going to beat on this on this record, and it makes total sense. And also, thanks for saying that as well. Because whenever I do these podcasts, I always want to have it be something where when I get to talk to the artists, it's like it's an experience you're not necessarily going to have. You're not going to have that you know just straight up standard. Interview. We're going to constantly going back and forth and stuff. But I want to make it as fun as possible at the same time as well as enjoyable at the same time as well. So that it's just like, hey, you know. You guys want to come back and I get people like, yeah, we'll come back. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's how you build your platform. And, and the yeah. other thing is, too, is like I think that that um, podcasting in general, because, dude, I'm a nerd like I'm a huge nerd um, and I get a lot of like I think podcasts in general are such a great medium for for spreading information um, and having free flowing conversation uh, in, in a lot of respects is, is the best way to to learn new things. and um, learn about new people and stuff and so so yeah this was a very comfortable setting and and um you know i I think you're going to be very successful with your podcast you're doing you know like i said you do great interviewer and and this was a lot of fun dude yeah thank you well i'm glad you guys had a great time and as we wrap this up if you guys have any last words you want to get out before we close this out i'll let you guys have the floor right now um so right now uh we are um we're pushing our pre-orders for our album. There's, there's a whole bunch of, uh, pre-order bundles. Uh, you can, uh, you can order the pre-order to, to distance, uh, uh, our new, uh, upcoming record, uh, on our website, uh, boys of Um, also, uh, thank you everybody for checking us out and, and the support on the, on the new, uh, the new music. Um, there was something else I was going to say and I can't remember, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So we have something really exciting in place of, uh, of a tour because we obviously everything going on with COVID um, I'm not going to like uh, make any announcements or anything right now, but it's something that we've been working on uh, kind of like a uh, it's, it's, it's going to be something really cool in place of a tour until we can tour. Um, we've been working on that. So be on the lookout for that uh, after the uh, the album comes out. We have something really cool and exciting we're working on for everybody. Awesome. Dan, you got anything you got to say before we close this out? Um, I'm going to hit all the bases, but I think uh, thank, thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for everyone that requested us on this. And I can't wait for you all to hear the album. 
And as I close this out, I'm going to say this. Well, because of everything that Eli and Dan said, especially like where you can find their stuff, um, where you can order the pre-order stuff. I know you guys, you guys want the easiest way possible to get to that. So when you are done listening to this, take a look at the description of the podcast, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play or Google Podcasts, whatever it is right now, iHeartRadio and on YouTube as well. Just take a look at the description. You're going to find find Boys of Fall online and you're just going to see a bank of all these different links for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, where you can stream them, where you can find them on their website, where you can get order their pre-order uh, bundles, where you can order all that you're just going to see that list of links. It's going to be a one-stop shop. I'm making it as easy as possible for you guys because that's the best way to go about it. You guys are going to have no excuse not to get into this band. And Eli, Dan, I want to thank you guys for being on the podcast because this was incredible. Like I was just like, I'm hoping this is going to be a good one. And this was one of the best ones I've done so far. And I'm feeling this right now. So I'm awesome. like, this was awesome. Oh, it means a lot, dude. This was a great <laughs> time. I was uh, very much looking forward to this this morning too. So this, this has been a great time. And uh, you know, any, anytime you'd like, uh, you know, to have us back, we would, we would uh, definitely hop on it and maybe yes. some of the other guys can hop on it in our place. They're equally as interesting and talented. So um, yeah, st- thanks so much for having mm-hmm. us, dude. We'll have to set that up once, um, probably a little bit after time, after the album releases and after sure. people really get it, because then we can really go in deep with kind of the reaction for it and how everything has turned out so far for that. We can really go in deep with that with you guys, with some of the other guys, whatever it might be. But the plan is definitely to have you back on at some point in the future. Thanks so much, man. Yes, and, thank uh, you. If we ever get to uh, play, uh, so we've played uh, Madison a few times. Um, and so if we ever make it to Milwaukee, dude, expect, uh, expect some big hugs. We, we are oh, yeah. a hugging group of guys. So already, well, if you make it to, I'll put it this way. If you make it to Milwaukee, Chicago, Madison, and I get any word that you guys are going to be there, you pretty much can expect some. And if you guys are going hard, if you guys are going hard on with some of the music and the mosh pits, it's going, and you're wondering who the heck just broke their nose. <laughs> More than likely it's going to be me. So you might not want to hug me after I'm uh, with a broken nose with blood run all over my face, but just, I'll tell you this, I'm going to be there. That's awesome, dude. So as I close out this podcast, I can't close this out with a goodbye because, hey, we already got plans to do another one, you know, sometime in the future and to see you guys live. So I can't end this with a goodbye. So we're going to end this with my favorite thing ever. See you later. That's right. See you, man. Let's right, see you guys. Whoa, 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 folks. That was my interview with Eli and Dan from the band Boys of Fall. Again, one of my favorite episodes that I have ever done. And I cannot wait to not only get these guys back in the podcast after the release of Distance and after we get some time to see exactly how this all plays out for them, which I have an incredible feeling that's going to be incredibly well. But also, I cannot wait to see them play live for the first time in my lifetime, I should say. And just when concerts come back, man, this is going to be awesome. Please, 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 please remember to check out the album Distance. It comes out on November 20th. I will be reviewing it on our YouTube channel. If, um, because Eli and I were talking about it afterwards, hopefully we're able to get it early but so that we can put out the uh, review a day and a half before so you guys can get really jazzed up for it. If that doesn't end up happening, we'll end up reviewing it and putting it out after the fact. But I cannot wait to really listen to the whole entire album. The first three singles are awesome. I want you guys to check it out. So again, you can find everything for Boys of Fall when it comes to following them, streaming their music, getting those pre-order merch bundles, pre-ordering the album, wherever it might be. Again, look at the description in this podcast episode. You will definitely find all those links. I was absolutely incredible. And happy that we got to do this episode. Well, incredibly happy, I should say. Not me being incredible, you know. Fine, that's kind of me tooting my own horn. But but whatever that might be. So enough with that. That's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you guys for watching listening to the Core Progression Podcast. Brought to you by MSOTV Rocks for Rock and Metal Thrive. My name is Kevin. And you guys know how I end every single one of these episodes of the big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah!